for women when you grew and council member Dennis Zine. This is the Audits and Governmental Efficiency Committee. Uh, we have three motions before us today, um, all of them which speak to um, or focus on Controller Chick's recently re released report blueprint for a comprehensive citywide anti-gang strategy, which includes findings and recommendations pertaining to the city's current anti-gang efforts. As many of you are aware, this is a very important issue, not only in the city, but regionally as well. Uh, the recommendations are numerous from uh, recommending that the city integrate, consolidate, and coordinate its anti-gang efforts, and also that the programs be consolidated under the mayor. Um, and with that, we will entertain today three motions um, proposed by Councilwoman Wendy Gruel. But before we begin the actual discussion on each of the three motions, uh, we'd like to call uh, Controller Laura Chick up to give a brief summary of your report or any other items you would wish to uh, share with us at okay. this time. Thank you. Well, thank you. Um, thank you, Chair, Council Member Wezar. I actually um, wasn't planning on making a presentation on the report, and I'm happy to answer okay. any questions. I'm, I'm going to be very brief. I'm here to basically say I am dumbfounded, astounded, and dismayed by the fighting that's going on about how the city should do its gang programs better. And I'm here to speak in support of Council Member Gruel's motions moving forward with due speed. Um, I have noticed that they were assigned and directed to, I think, four committees on one motion, five committees on another motion, six committees on the third motion. And so I'm very eager to watch what this committee is doing today because it's my impression that, uh, Council Member Gruel, you're asking for various uh, key officials in the city to come back and say how we can do this rather than keeping the discussion on how and why we can't. Um, and so hopefully the direction to staff to do those reports can go forward from this committee rather than bouncing around the five, four, and six committees respectively. Mm -hmm. I guess that's a question. I don't know if that's a possibility. Well, <clears throat> and I one. could just answer it because we that day as we looked at and some of the advice we got from the CLA's office, I know public safety has indicated that they um, will waive it um, from their committee. The one item I think had personnel committee and then um, they always go to budget if there's any fiscal impact um, on that basis. So I think the, the concept was to um, expedite, and we'll see how this meeting goes today, about moving some of those items forward so that they don't necessarily have to be stuck in one committee and can um, be analyzed and so forth before it has to go to another committee to get the approval to analyze that. Right. I guess it, to me the key thing today is to get city staff directed to start doing the reports and come back with the information that you've asked for. And I get, that's what I'm asking is, are these motions going to all those committees before the direction is given to staff? Because if it is, then we're talking many, many weeks of delay. Um, I think that there's even a precedent or a history of motions on this very subject going forward, only going to one committee. Um, I think there's a motion recently to form a new city department, and I believe that that motion has been sent uh, only to Budget and Finance Committee, not to personnel, not to any of the others. So maybe this could be fast-tracked in the same way. Yeah. And I don't think, I think and maybe and it being stamped it wasn't, I know Mr. Zion, whenever there's a change in the personnel, um, I would think so. goes to personnel uh, committees right. um, as well, so I don't know what the reasoning for that, but I think um, we'll see how this occurs today, but uh, the goal is to, to get it moving and not to have it be held up. In and, and not have the motions going to all these different committees with each committee saying, yes, go ahead and come back with the report. Mm -hmm. Okay. That's Drag it out for another few years. Yes. While people die. So. Great. Okay. Well, this is what I'll recommend. If, uh, if, if it's okay, uh, can we do, we'll do items number two and three and then get to number one at the end. I think that one. Well, I'm not sure if that has more discussions. I have more questions on number one than the other two. I don't know if, if we would. If, if they're your motions, Ms. Gruel. Do you have any? Um, we should just take them in order. I'm fine either way. Uh, probably. I mean, I, okay. you know, I guess maybe I can, if you don't mind, I'll just outline why I, I thought, again, okay. and, and we've 
think you've done this too, Mr. Wiesar, um, as well. When I chaired audits committee, is that you kind of take the audit and you pick out the things that are important and you kind of move those forward um, and make recommendations by introducing a motion. And so that was the concept behind this of trying to get it moving um, and to be able to to do that, um, which you have done as well in this in this committee uh, to to see some actions being taken. Uh, and I have uh, you know said publicly that I support the controller's recommendations, particularly to have uh, one responsible entity within the city uh, to deal with the gang issues. Uh, there were some motions introduced by Councilmember Cardenas, some of which are, are um, uh, on Friday, very similar to the items I believe mm -hmm. in, item two and three, um, a little bit different, but mm -hmm. primarily the same about setting up um, uh, comprehensive performance measures and evaluation process, as well as um, looking at the family service contracts and so forth in the anti-gang unit, all those things that are, are not, um, again, I don't think are uh, not controversial. Not controversial. Yeah. Um, and so uh, those, I think, in, in my notes, we'd like to see those move forward. Um, I have been dis dismayed, I'll use your words, dismayed as well at the some of the nonprofits that I have call, have spoken to um, have been led to believe that they're going to lose their funding right. um, that uh, the position that we've taken has been that everything has failed and I think that not at all not at all you have taken, it's the no. city's delivery system it's us <laughs> it's not the programs or their operators it's us and it's the ability to go out and say what is working and what isn't working in in the city of Los Angeles and I think that um, the blueprint that was provided by both Connie Rice and uh, control the controller's office lays out a number of those items and so I think in ad adopting items number two and three today um, would clearly set us on the on the path uh, to be able to, to look at reevaluating some of those programs and, and again what works and what doesn't work and when we can have economies of scale um, I remember and they've had their own problems but LASA when LASA was created mm -hmm. the LA Homeless Service Authority and I was both on the city and the federal side during that time period um, that was the model for having a coordinated approach between governmental entities uh, for there be a, a ability to leverage the dollars as much as possible and to see coordinated and benchmarking and accountability it was not you know a lot of people weren't excited about that because benchmarking and accountability on social service programs is difficult for some um, and so there are ways however that have been developed to ensure that you give the most uh, flexibility to a program and at the same time hold them accountable for those exactly. dollars and so the the first item number one um, I think that um, for for me um, and I, I've said this in council is the fact that I, I came from a time uh, when Laura I think you were a staffer as I was you were in uh, the city council Bradley member yes Bradley administration and we had various programs that uh, were um, either came into that uh, mayor's office and Sharon I think you might have even been in the mayor's office at that time uh, that started there Lonnie started there um, there was uh, the LA neighborhood initiative LA's best was part of that mayor's office of youth development different things that there is a um, I think a history and a uh, path in which you can have a mayor be accountable for that and I think that what we have found is that not not that programs have failed but strategies have failed right. overall right. and that the time is for, for action and so my recommendation um, would be that um, when we look at 160 million dollars that we spend on some of these um, contracts and, and others that we should uh, for efficiency sake which is what this committee is and the audits that are part of what the controller has put forward that we uh, put it into to the mayor's office and instruct as the motion asks for um, actually requests that the appropriate staff come back and um, I just want to look at my the exact language so um, an item uh, number one which asks them to come back to specifically uh, CLA and CAO. Sorry, all of a sudden I was looking at my where my motion was on this one. On your first number one. On number one, yeah. Instructs the CEO to work with the appropriate entities to Thank develop you. recommendations to consolidate youth and family anti-gang programs into one office, reporting directly to the mayor. Okay. And instructs the city attorney to provide a legal mechanism to right. ensure that such an office would be subject to fiscal and performance audits every six months for the first, first two, two years. years of operation. And so I think that would 
uh, give us, again, the opportunity. There's been a lot of dialogue about what works and, and or doesn't work or other people's ideas, and no one has taken it from the next step from what the controllers recommended to say, here's how it would actually be done. Right. Uh, because to compare, you know, some people wanted departments, uh, which I, I'm, I don't think a creation of a new department, and we've seen, and we have a representative from the police department today where the LAPD has said, you know, we, we want this coordination within the mayor's office. We think that there is authority within the mayor's office to get those departments, um, if it's consolidated there, to work together and to be able to come up uh, with a, a very much strategic plan to address this this crisis. Um, I have to say, yesterday I was um, chairing council and I, my son was at home with some friends visiting out town, ten, a nine-year-old, and I came home and they watched a longer period of it than I anticipated they would to see his mom on TV. And uh, <laughs> they, the first thing they said to me when I came home last night was, we listened and we heard about the gang crisis. And this is a four-year-old and then there was a nine-year-old. And, and the little girl said to me, and a ten-year-old was killed. I'm almost 10. Wow. And it really hit her as to this happens to kids my age and we all have our own experiences of kids who have died in our area but it it was just the most recent example of how this impacts our children and uh, the thought that you know when they hear about these things happening the fear that they have um, and how do we ensure that they're safe their safety and I think that's what's important about having this consolidation and coordination and so my recommendation would be to to adopt one, two, and three. Um, again, I don't think two and three are contradictory to what Mr. Cardenas has put forward. There may be a, a few things here and here, there that are different, but I, I think that can be worked out just as we did in discussion of water and power today on how to bring everything together. But on item number one, I think it is appropriate and time to, to begin the process of saying here's how it would happen if it went into the mayor's office. And I would assume that report would also point out if there are problems what what, what the are. problems are, which I guess I just feel is such an essential piece for the council and the mayor to be able to make final decisions. Make a decision, yes, exactly. Okay. And an educated mm -hmm. well, Yeah, and, and thank you. And I think uh, you're correct. Uh, item number two and three, number two, to uh, develop a comprehensive performance measures evaluation processes. Everyone will agree with that. Reprocure uh, youth and family service contracts. I think uh, some of these are in there for years, and nobody, when we haven't evaluated them, we don't know. Why were they in there in the first place? They just keep, kind of keep going. I think it's good to uh, kind of, you know, we go for a checkup to the doctor. You know, sometimes we want to, well, I should, I'll, I'll stop there. Anyway, <laughs> um, so I think it's good to go back and look at those. And and we, you and I have talked about this, controller. Um, to me, I, I want to do the right thing, but at the same time, I want to make sure that we're moving forward in an appropriate way. And my question stems more from, uh, if we move it to the mayor's office, uh, it, the thought process that goes into that, it, there was a motion by Cardenas that I seconded because that motion said, let's create a task force that will look at the consolidation and then as we go through that process say, well, does it fit better to do a department or would it make better sense to go in the mayor's office? Because then you, once you start getting into more deeply into those things, you get a better sense of, okay, where, where does this fit better and what can we do? So that's where I, came into this discussion to kind of see that maybe your report you I, you know I, I skimmed through it kind of does go into that a little bit but you were probably okay you've seen it a lot more for m longer months than I have mm -hmm. so you've been able to say okay this is I think this is a better route so my question is what's the difference in your view between doing a department and going into the mayor's office because we all agree that we would want to consolidate I mean that's everyone would agree to that and and let me tell you all that um, one of the earlier drafts of the report actually talked about a separate department. Mm -hmm. And then we sat around the table, the consultants and my auditors and my staff, and, and you know, debated and went back and forth. So now let me tell you why we ended up saying the mayor's office. First of all, dollars, dollar-wise, I mean, it's just, I think, common sense that creating a new department involves um, some more cost versus moving it straight over to the mayor's office does not. But the most important things is about accountability and power. If you create a new department, can the general manager of one department tell general managers of other departments what to do in terms of, you know, we need to coordinate? Can a general manager of a new department reallocate and redeploy resources? Because council members, one of the things that has to happen here, no question, 
is resources have to be redeployed. That what the report says is we are funding programs that are maybe juvenile delinquency prevention programs. They're not anti, they're not gang prevention programs. We're not giving enough money to intervention. We've maybe got programs in districts where they might have a juvenile delinquency problem, but if we really want to go after the gang problem, maybe money needs to be taken away. I mean, there, there is going to be some of this reallocation. So I guess when we started asking and answering those questions, it made much more sense that the mayor's office is a place to do it. And then specifically, Council Member Wezar, I've always said this maybe is a first step and not permanent. Maybe exactly what we need is a new department someday. Maybe we need to consolidate and you know bring in some little departments or some independent commissions and fold them all together into a new human services department. But that path seemed like a much longer path. And always we were operating under kind of an emergency crisis umbrella that the killings aren't stopping. The problem isn't going away. If anything, it's potentially getting worse again as we move into a long, hot summer with uncertain economic times. And that our report's recommendations can move much faster. We can make immediate progress in the next six months in how we are overseeing gang programs and the money if it goes to the mayor's office versus if we start as the first step to make that department. And I guess my theory is let's heal some of this, let's fix it, let's get on the road, let's do the number two, the number three, some of the things we all agree on, put it in the mayor's office, and maybe in the next year, year and a half, two years, the council is going to decide to do this reconfiguration and form a new department and slide it back over. But I guess more than anything, it was we cannot research this, study it, task force it, ad hoc committee it anymore. We have to take some bold action. So, so, so your position would be you, you give it to the mayor and have him fix it. Fix it and, and have the different, yeah. And fix it, fix it as much as possible. He can't take all of it at once. He can't take all of what the report said all at once. I mean, mm -hmm. that's why Council Member Gruel's uh, number one motion is needed because there's some complications, uh, you know, involved in some of it. But let him fix as much as possible right away. The discussion on the new department can absolutely go forward, and all of this information can converge. But while that's happening, mayor's office and his gang director gets resources to really start doing what needs to be done fast. And two questions on that. Number one, when you say temporary, do you imagine one year, two years, do you know how long do you think it'll be in the mayor's office under your? In, in my mind, I think in terms of a couple of years. I guess because it, it just seems practical and logical that from the time you start to when you, you, you really start to have new RFPs, RFQs, RFPs, whatever we want to call them, um, I think is probably close to a two-year process. But there is no magic number, really. I mean, and I think there's, I'm sorry to jump in, there are, there are examples of when, the, again, the mayor's office uh, during Bradley had Office of Youth Development, had Office of Disability, and they, some of them were there longer than others, and they went to be a department, and now we're talking about consolidation of some of those. But mm -hmm. there was a period of time in which they were able to kind of get their feet and to be able to gain that credibility. And even with a program like LA's Best, which started there, um, and then ultimately, you know, kind of, it was its own nonprofit, but it, it started as uh, an incubator in that. In the mayor's in office. In the mayor's right. office. And so I think there's a variety of models. It doesn't say it has to be one one specific way or another. Okay. And in your the 90, the 19, how many million? 19 million. 19 million dollars. Mm. Those are programs that are targeted towards youth, but not necessarily anti-gang. Or a variety of or things. Variety, I think it's domestic things. violence, okay. shelters, et cetera. And I, I want to make very clear, we are not saying in the report get rid of those programs, defund them. What we're saying is they're kind of nebulous and they don't really belong, they're not fitting with anything else. And we think that those dollars and those programs all could be part of what these targeted communities need in terms of 
the full array of services. Certainly, for instance, domestic violence is a key part of the gang program and the communities that house a lot of gangs. So this consolidation, right now we spend, what, 160, 160 million? Uh, and the number, you know, depending what you're looking at, changes, yeah. But, but let's think about for a, a moment for that. The, the dollar amount we're dealing with, the personnel, to be under the mayor directly um, as, you know, right now, what does he have? Deputy chiefs and a chief of staff. To, to have a large component that large there, I mean, wouldn't I'm not, yeah, we, we never talked about putting that much over there. Okay. We talked about 19 million, the 19 million of programs that don't maybe have specific goals and objectives and don't seem to belong. Oh, so only the 19 million? The 19 million, I think we looked at bridges. Okay. I, you know, I, I, I quite frankly haven't looked at the report for at least three weeks, so I am forget, but we never, ever, meant to transfer 160 million over but there. But if our goal is to get consolidation for all of them, wouldn't we have to do that at some point? Well, that's probably transitioning to a new department. Or it's with a mayor in charge um, having ways to make sure that there's integration of all of those programs. And for instance, we've never gone to say the programs in recreation and parks, many of which do connect to anti-gang programs, should be moved over to the mayor's office. Um, you know, it belongs in rec and parks, mm -hmm. but what needs to happen is a much better interfacing and integration. Yeah. The way I'm beginning to see it is that whether we go through the route of one of Cardenas's proposals, which was to do the task force and have the different people look at it, or the mayor, they're both kind of doing the same work. Mm -hmm. and, but you get more specific to say, give $19 million to that right away so that they could start working on some consolidation there. But eventually, when we do want to do the full consolidation, and we're talking about $160 million, because we don't want to reduce the amount, hopefully. We need to, of, of, we need to increase it. We need it. to increase it. Right. So at some point, uh, you know, the mayor's office wouldn't have the capacity to kind of say, okay, now we're really going to co fully consolidate after we've looked at this a bit more. And um, we, I mean, he yeah. can't do it. I mean, or she, whoever's the mayor after him. Uh, right. Uh, he or she, um, it's uh, it's it's a, it's a lot, and I think eventually we do need to get there to a, a department. And and what I'm beginning to see is that you and uh, the ad hoc committee a, a lot in common. It's just council it's member Cardenas and I we want to get there have probably much more in common than not, and that's why I started with my comments about being dismayed. Um, one, because of the importance of the problem, and two, because anybody who's gotten steeped in this issue, there are certain key things that the experts and the academics all agree on. It's not a big, wide path. It's a narrow path that, that we know to walk. And it's just about some of the details and the timing, you know? Mm -hmm. So there is so much more overlap, um, and, and, and it needs to all come together, and, and hopefully, the motions today in this committee can play a role in that. It's like, you know, you hear that expression, the devil's in the details? Mm -hmm. This is an incredibly perfect example of it. And it's time to start, stop arguing about the details mm -hmm. and just mm -hmm. start making progress. And my proposal says we can make the progress faster by having the mayor's office take the lead. And what happens after that, there's all kinds of possibilities. Mm -hmm. So the $19 million, what would the mayor's office use it for right away? Oh, I don't think they'd use it right away. Yeah. I think in terms of reprogramming those dollars, I mean, that has to fit into... Whatever they their, say. Mm -hmm. it's like so again, that is that is not something that can happen overnight, uh, yeah. the $19 million. Not overnight, yeah. but it can happen a lot faster than if we're starting, if we say no to the mayor, and we've got to go with a department. I'm telling you, you're not going to have anything up and running for probably a couple of years. Yeah. Any, or, well, I've read the news articles. Mm. Interesting. Mm -hmm. um, and I know we have Commander Pat Gannon back there who has a bit of experience with gangs and work in South Bureau. Uh, Commander, if you can come forward. The concern I have. Uh, and this came up, I want to give credit to Martin Ludlow, because he and I, when he was here as a councilman, decided we need to do something. We were doling out all this money. We weren't seeing positive results. Police department has to investigate the crimes, the drive-by shootings, et cetera. 
and there was a disconnect. And I'm for consolidation. I'm for consolidating under Department of Human Services, Children, Youth, and the Families, Department of Aging, Disability. I'm for consolidating. I think the less administration we have, the more resource we can get on the street. So I don't have any problem with putting this under the mayor's office and let Jeff Carr or whomever be responsible. But my concern is that it works with the police department because the police department has programs. We've got the after school programs. We've got the Jeopardy. Uh, there's a ton of programs that are in existence. But what I find is like when the nonprofits all fear that the money's not going to be there, mm. all fear that the flow that keeps them alive is going to be shut down, then obviously they rally for that cause. What we need is to do something that's going to be cost effective, get the job done. And I remember from the Charter Commission, when I was on the Charter Commission and Dick Ridden was the mayor, uh, there was this concern about hold someone accountable, hold someone responsible, because the fingers used to point and no one was accountable or responsible. So we made in the Charter the mayor is responsible. Whether it's good or bad, the mayor is ultimately responsible. So to have the mayor responsible, to have this under his umbrella, to me makes sense with what the Charter mandates to have someone in control. But to have this debate, and then I know Connie Rice did her report, and you did your audit, and we could do these till doomsday, which would cost us a lot of money, right. but we're not putting the resources out there where they need to be. Now, Commander, you worked South Bureau for a long time. You're probably now gang czar of the city. <laughs> or gang How about assistant gang czar? Assistant gang czar. The police department. So uh, how does this fit with what the police department is doing? Because I know that you've got the investigative responsibilities, but you also have the Jeopardy program, some of those other programs to try and divert uh, the youth from gang activity. And whether it's domestic violence, Haven Hills received a letter from Haven Hills, Battered Woman Shelter, where Laura, you and I both worked together right. many years ago. Uh, I'm looking at supporting, giving it to the mayor. You're responsible, Mr. Mayor, but how is this going to connect with the police department's activities, the police department's programs, and what you folks need to do to not only investigate crime, but to prevent crime with that link between prevention and apprehension and how it all works together? Well, as you know, the, the police department's programs generally don't address the same issues as hardcore gang uh, issues. Um, and there are important programs, and I don't see those going anywhere. And I think we all support after-school programs and, and those types of things. What I have seen a need for and, and, and continue, I know the chief has the support, is that hardcore gang intervention that occurs in, in our most violent neighborhoods. And I think that's what the where we're moving towards is, is a, a additional funding for those particular programs. I mean, for a police department to actually start talking about partnering with hardcore gang interventionists, that's, that's a pretty radical move for the police department. But honestly, in the last um, four or five years is that I've been a command officer both in Harbor area and 77th Street area, um, the, that is where we need to go. That is where we're going to make the the uh, the additional progress. And and we've had really good relationships. They don't work for us. They're not. I'm not in charge of them. But having a dialogue with them has been incredibly productive. The problem is there's not enough of them, and uh, to do the work that they have to do in our most severely um, violent plagued neighborhoods in, in, in the city. And I think from that standpoint, that's where we really want to see it move forward. We want we don't want them we don't want programs cut, but we got to move forward on that on that piece. So the role of having this under the mayor's office, uh, what the controller said is you're a gentleman, you're the chief of police. You can't dictate to any other general manager. You can ask. But the mayor's the only one who the general managers have to respond to. That's correct. The mayor's the ultimate authority when it comes to general managers, I want you to take personnel and put them over here. You could ask as the commander of LAPD to building and safety. They'll say, yeah, thank you very much. But the mayor tells the general manager of building and safety, it's going to get done. So for me, the chain of command is real simple. If the police department needs something, they go to the mayor. The mayor tells the general manager, whatever department, this is what we want, it's done. There's not take it to committee, do a motion. I mean, it, it, it's, it's a seamless process. So the, the process that we're looking at, would it work for you if it's under the mayor's office? Absolutely, and the chief has been uh, absolutely supportive of that. And if we start another department, I remember when we had a problem at the zoo. It used to be under Rex and Parks. So we started a department of zoo. Well, we still have problems because somebody goes in and gets bitten by some, uh, not alligator, what's that called, the dinosaur? Dinosaur. No, not <laughs> dinosaur. Some How old are you? That was a few years ago. Yeah, yeah. How old is he? <laughs> what? How old are you? <laughs> 
talking about dinosaurs. I've never seen a dinosaur. I've never that was me dinosaur. biting you. <laughs> no. Somebody went into an area in the zoo when it was under the Department of Zoo, and it, it's a dragon. It's What's Come that called? Come on a dragon. Come on a dragon. Oh. Okay. And it See, was a movie star. It's kind of like a, yeah, yeah. Sharon, yeah. Sharon Stone's husband. Sharon Stone's husband. It's kind of like a dinosaur. Yeah. So what, what happens is we, we form this Department of Zoo to take care of the problems that happen to the zoo, and we still have problems. So for me, if we form another department that's another general manager, more salary, more administration, more this, more that, this way we can put the boots on the ground and get it done if the police department likes it. Since ultimately we turn to the police department and say, why is crime up, crime down, pat on the back, crime up, what are you doing wrong? Uh, so if you folks like it, to me, that tells me that it would work. And I know, Pat, you've been down in South Bureau how many years? I've spent nearly all of my 30 years in, in South Bureau. And you've seen it go through different changes, different cycles. Yeah, 15 years of that in 77th itself. Wow. So, I mean, that's a long time to be in South Bureau. Yeah. I mean, I was there as a young officer in 77th Street uh, way back when. But I have a lot of respect for you, and I know that your leadership and what you've done in the command structure, and to me, that's a stamp of approval. If you, you know, what Harry's saying over there, it doesn't really count because Harry's sitting here in City Hall, not really out there on the streets, Harry. Oh, for Harry. But, well, that's okay. We've got to pick on Harry once in a while. But well, I, one of the things I think that the, the reason that the chief selected um, Deputy Chief Charlie Beck to come to Detective Bureau, and I think the, one of the reasons that I was selected to come into Detective Bureau also is, is we do have the gang issues under our, our um, purview. And because we have embraced mm. moving forward on these, on these gang and, and uh, prevention issues and really looking to support them and work with them, not fight them um, yeah. and, and, and be an obstacle, we absolutely believe that, that it works. And, you know, in my previous job, um, I had 120 call-outs um, in the last year. In the last in the year, I had 120 call-outs, and most of those involved homicides. In those in those homicides, um, we have developed such a good relationship that we now call um, gang interventionists from the watch commander's office on any gang shooting or any significant incident. In addition to um, shooting, I don't know how many times. Perry Crouch was here earlier, and other gang intervention people who have uh, programs that we sat out there in the middle of Nickerson Gardens or somewhere in 77th, um, 54th and Crenshaw, I can think of another shooting, where we literally um, talked about issues, talked about problems, and those guys went to work and solved problems for us and knocked the violence down. I don't think that you reduce homicides in... Um, Southeast Division, for example, last year by 50 percent, as the Times like to say, a change in demographics or, or gentrification. That doesn't happen in the housing developments. It just doesn't. Um, that happened from a lot of hard work from community people, interventionists, and a relationship with, with the police department. And that's where we need to go, and that's how we need to, to move forward. And in its current configuration, it's not doing it. Um, and so as That's, the controller says, she's yeah, absolutely right. I'll ask a question because I think that, as you said, you work with the interventionists. I mean, I envision, which I think was what the controller wrote and what, what you talked about as well, Mr. Zine, is the fact that if something like that, a homicide, and you get that call at 2 in the morning that you call, and I know Connie Rice, for example, said she was getting a lot of calls, particularly after her first report and even now, um, and the uh, active interventionists that are out there. But mm -hmm. is having literally the... Uh, mayor's office being able to call Reckon Parks that night and say, hey, this happened, you know, just down the street from a park. We're concerned about what's going to happen in that area. We need you to do what you can to calling the Family Deve <laughs> Development Network or something <clears throat> that says, you know, there's a family that was impacted by this. We need to help them in that place and their, you know, brothers and sisters that may be living there and help. That there would be that coordinated approach that the mayor's office can actually do and that a general manager who doesn't have that same relationship or pull because you know, they may have called Rec, I'm just using Rec and Park's example, they'll call, you know, John Muckrin and goes, hey, you know, that's really nice, uh, uh, you know, Mr. Benbow, it, that's mm -hmm. great, but, you know, I have, I have a, my other gang problem over here, or I have this issue, and, you know, I'll try to get someone over there as quickly as possible. Again, I don't think that's how he'd respond, but some gentlemen would do that, and we want to be able to say the power of the mayor's office, and I think we've seen in a short period of time that Jeff Carr, um, without a whole lot of uh, authority over some of the direct programs, but... Um, has done a lot. In he's beat making, me to yeah. many a crime scene um, over the since he's been here in the very short time that that he's been here the uh, last six months or so. Um, he has done that, and and the the reason that it's critical is that I spent two years in South Bureau doing nothing but trying to develop the relationship with gang interventionists, and then trying to figure out 
who they're good at. I mean, what are they good at? Wh who, which gangs do they target? Who do they have, um, a li as they use the term, license to operate? Where are they most, most effective? And then try to plug in the police yeah, station or whatever the case may be. That was a lot of, a lot of work. Which LAPD shouldn't, shouldn't have it. Right. And the mayor's office and, and Jeff Carr um, can very quickly do that mm -hmm. so that when we do have a problem, it may not I think we still need to develop to maintain our, our relationship with the interventionist, but we need to have a one-stop phone call um, to the appropriate person in Jeff Carr's office that would say, "We just had a shooting at 83rd and Main, or we just had a shooting out in the Valley, and um, could you get the appropriate intervention people uh, out there?" And they should know clear that. Clear lines of authority and yeah. accountability. Absolutely. Clear, clear lines of authority and accountability is what we're looking for right now. But eventually, and I'm go back to my other point, which is when we start consolidating more and more and more programs, it's going to get to the point where the, the mayor's office only has so much capacity. So then that clear lines of authority seems like we're probably going to lose the benefit of that because we have to eventually go to some other type of structure. We can't. So the $160 million that we're spending right now, we, we wouldn't have to consolidate those. But we, well, we know that it's, I don't think it's working, the results that we're seeing where the money's flowing. I don't think mm -hmm. there's the, the accountability that we want or the results we want. And, and I trust that, you know, that we've got a ton of departments. We've got transportation, police, fire, sanitation, whatever it is. We've got 40-some departments. The mayor's responsible. That's what the mayor's responsible for, to run the city. Everything from sanitation to recs and parks to police, everything. There's independency in the controller's office, independency in the city attorney's office. But the mayor is the one that has the responsibility. And serious crime is a major problem. If we put that on the back of the mayor, that's his job. That's why you take that oath. I'm going to be the mayor of the city. I'm going to run the operations. And he's got personnel within the entity of the mayor's office, within that, the boundaries. And he's got Jeff Carr, who's his, his gang liaison. He's got the other man who does public safety. So I don't think it's an overburden. I think the money that we're giving out, which is a giving out with the, that we're spending millions of dollars, needs to make sure it's going in the right direction for the right response. But what does consolidation mean, then? Does that mean that we get all these programs under the mayor, or does that not necessarily? They don't. That? So, do they stay within their departments? Well, some can. For instance, as I said, recreation and parks belongs in recreation and parks, um, and there's been, never been any discussion about taking those dollars. When you, when you talk about consolidation, I guess I think more in terms of forming a human services department. Correct. Um, that that's not just about gang programs. You know what what. What our report talks about is putting anti-gang programs into the mayor's office. If you create a new department, it's going to be doing more than just anti-gang programs. It's going to be delivering all of our youth services, I would think, et cetera. It's maybe going to bring in some of those commissions. And so, I, you know, the $160 million, I'm not sure where that number is coming from. I don't think that's a number that we ever used in the report that said, Put it over. Put that much money or that much staff over in the mayor's office. Right. A consolidation effort and a creation of a new department, in a way, can can occur completely separate from the discussion of anti-gang programs, and maybe should. You know, I I guess it's it's not an either or. It's go this way now because it's the best way and the quickest way. Mm -hmm. And if the council and the mayor want to look more forward into the future of creating a whole new department at some point it might make sense to then take that stuff out of the mayor's office and fold it in over here mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, no matter what there's going to be prioritizing which is the most awful part you're already getting letters from programs that are worried right yep that they're going to lose their money but i guess i would say and i think that's what the commander is saying are we saying that the gang problem in los angeles is a number one problem and if we are, then when we start allocating discretionary dollars, maybe we can't do everything. Maybe we can't. And maybe some of, some of the dollars that we have are going to get reallocated to anti-gang programs. And that happens whether there's a new department or whether there's 
it's in the mayor's office. Or there is an RFP, and I think if you mentioned you know, some of these, uh, some of these um, grants have been going on for many years and not gone out to RFP. Exactly. The, the it's by entitlement. Yeah, right. They've always gotten it. We're going to give it to them again. 20 years ago, the things you would do to address gangs in their neighborhoods are very different today. Um, and the organizations that may have been effective in doing that 20 years ago may not be effective today. And that's what I think even two and three and some of Mr. Cardenas's motions look at, which is let's, our priority is, is gangs. Um, our priority, like LAPD, is hiring LAPD officers. We may not do all those other bells and whistles for a while because we're going to hire police officers. Same each issue. And that it's cyclical. And I think that um, you can go in this direction immediately and have the mayor's office have that accountability and a portion of them go there. Some, you know, you may say the after school programs, uh, you know, may be separate. I, I, I don't know how it's going to look. But I think that this sets the ball rolling. The idea is mm -hmm. to not to stall, to just move forward and say, let's look at what it would take to put in the mayor's office and what initially you would put in that mayor's office and still uh, be able to evaluate appropriate list times. But I think there's an anxiousness of crisis, as you mentioned. That yeah, and let me ask another question. C can the mayor do that right now? Can he say, you know, he, he said, I'm going to hire 1,000 new officers. That's a priority. So he sets that out. He starts moving the city in that direction, right? He makes uh, planting 1,000 million new trees a priority to green and combat global warming. Under his authority, he could say, oh, we're going to combat anti-gangs. I direct my general managers to work with much Jeff harder. Carr. It's What's much difference? harder. I mean, what's, what's you know, because I agree. I, I've said all along this falls at the mayor's feet no matter what because in the end isn't really the mayor responsible for the entire city. Yeah. But to say that under the current structure that he can do it as efficiently and quickly, I mean, that means he's got to have all of his different deputies calling all these different departments, that, that example of that you gave of recreation and parks. I mean, that starts to... I don't know, just in an organizational way, starts to say to the mayor, okay, here are all these little dots, run around connecting them, versus bring it into his office and, and, and let him do it, you know? Um, I guess, in a way, it's, you know, we can talk about how he can do it, or we can talk about how he can't do it. And I have heard your colleague who chairs the gang ad hoc committee ask similar question. Uh, isn't the mayor already in charge of everything? Mm -hmm. But that's like saying, okay, yes, he is. But part of what he's in charge of is incredibly broken and dysfunctional. Why not fix it? What are we going to do? Say to the mayor, take over, we're going to hold you accountable, and here's this dysfunctional system. Now do something with it. Mm -hmm. Versus we're going to give you the ability to be directly over these things. Mm -hmm. it's, it's not dissimilar from the accountability issue. Okay, we've mm -hmm. got a city attorney opinion that says the controller can't do this. We've got a mayor who's invited me in. So there's no problem. Mm -hmm. But you can audit a program. Yes, I can. Mm -hmm. And Thank that's you. what we're talking about. That's yes. exactly How effective right. is the program? That's exactly right. So, I mean, that issue is moot. And the stuff about, you know, isn't the mayor in charge now? He is. But that's like handcuffing him and saying, N now we want you to fix the gang programs. We're going to hold you accountable, but we're going to put you over this mess, this disconnected mess. Um, so, you know, and I, I would offer this, the, the suggestion or the theory that if you're creating a new department, you're going to have the same prioritization issues. You're going to have the same programs co and the same constituency coming and saying, how can you take away our commission on this or our department on that? You're, you're throwing us to the wolves. So either way you go, you're going to have some stakeholders out there who are going to be unhappy. But the goal is to reduce gang violence in the city of Los Angeles. And again, I would also say that the council member's motion really is asking for a report back um, from our city experts to lay out what are the challenges, what are the problems, what's the roadmap. It is not committing your vote uh, to doing it. It's not an action to allocate dollars. It's an action to ask for a report. To give us the, mm -hmm. And if you're having a report on another department, don't you at least want to see what the alternative is or an alternative? So. Any other questions or comments? No. 
that's let's go to a public comment right now and uh, mr. chair just yes. to uh, clarify for the record uh, this discussion was on item one and that's motion Gruel Han Zine Weiss relative to consolidating youth and family anti-gang programs into one office reporting directly to the mayor mm -hmm. and uh, the disposition I make for the a motion that we uh, approve that Okay, so then that means the uh, moving clauses, which is to have the various report backs, are uh, approved by the committee. Okay. And, and let's, um, okay, we still have to do public comment on uh, that. Yes, so, yes. So let's but do that. It wasn't announced that that was what this discussion we was. We were yeah, you guys were rolling, so. Okay. <laughs> so we have uh, several public speakers. Uh, three public speakers um, signed up for all three so I, I think if you could just uh, comment uh, when you come up because we are we, we this is just item one right well we'll go through uh, the other uh, two items that's and right, just that's quickly right. you're just them. on item one right okay now. Ben Shermer good afternoon I am Ben Shermer I'm the executive director for Rainbow Services and I'm one of the agencies that you're talking about and I think my concern, and I, and I drafted a letter that I sent, um, is that when they talk about inside and outside the umbrella of gang violence programs, I don't know that that's as clear. And, and I, we are a domestic violence agency down in San Pedro. Um, first, let me say I'm not concerned about losing funding for my agency. I'm concerned about losing services for domestic violence victims. So there is a difference. Um, there is a strong link between domestic violence services and, and violence in the home and gang violence. That's been proven statistically. My concern about the blueprint, a blueprint is that it doesn't really address domestic violence. It doesn't really link domestic violence and domestic violence services to reducing the gang violence program. So I'm concerned that the city has a domestic violence task force that was not consulted. None of the domestic violence agencies were talked to in the blueprint. And I just think that when you're looking at consolidating the programs, that's an important piece that's missing. And I can give you a really good example. We had a family that just left our shelter a couple weeks ago. It was a mother with three children. Her 13-year-old was being harassed and abused by his father who is a gang member because the 13 year old did not want to join a gang. If it was not for them being able to hide out in our shelter to get away from that, that would be another child that's joining a gang. There is a very clear link in LA, certainly down in San Pedro and the clients that we provide services for between family violence and gang violence. The programs that we have now are really minimally funded. I come here from Florida, and I'm a little embarrassed at how poorly the shelters are funded in LA City. We don't get one penny of, of city funds. It's all CDBG pass-through. They're really hanging on by a shoestring. Any reduction or reallocation or redirection, is, you're going to put agencies out of business. So it's, it's the reduction in services for victims and keeping those children from becoming gang members, that's my concern, which is why I came out here today. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. And I think just, uh, you know, rest assured, the three of us, and I know our other colleagues, understand that linkage, as does the controller who mentioned the linkage on, on um, family violence and domestic violence. So I'm a little confused whether the domestic violence funding is in the $19 million or not. Uh, s someone from my staff could take you over the list, um, and and I and because uh, I, I downloaded the report that yeah. was put on the website last night, yeah. it does give the supporting documentation for what's in the 19 million. Or CDD is right behind you, uh, <laughs> okay. and they they will be able to share that information with you as well. Okay, okay. thank you, Sarah Birding. I'm actually the executive director of Haven Hills, and we serve victims of domestic violence out in the San Fernando Valley, Valley but also throughout the city of L.A. Uh, because of the, the way the system works to help protect victims of domestic violence once they, they seek the shelter programs. And, and actually, um, I have presented you with a cover letter and the letter that Ben Shermer had addressed to Laura Chick. And I, and I have to concur, and I'm not going to repeat everything that ben, ben just said, but I have the same concerns and the same feelings that we need to be working closely 
um, you know, with the anti-gang program and the strategies, because I know with Haven Hills, through the 30 years that we've been in business, I've been associated with them for 20. And during that time, I know that we have seen multiple um, families come through, and it, their, their violence is intimately related with gang violence also, and they're dealing with those issues. And my concern also was in this $19 million that the domestic violence programs were a part of that, but yet the information is vague and we're not actually seeing the DV program, you know, any of the funding that would be protect, protecting the services that we do have, even though we need a lot more dollars out there across the city for the services and help improve them. So I, I would like clarity on whether we are included in that 19 million. And if we are, we need to be asked to come to the table. And I think the city does have the domestic violence task force in place. And that being um, the executive directors and the people that are a part of that task force, we represent the experts on DV. And we also understand the interlocking of gang violence along with domestic violence and how that needs to work together to a great extent. So I, I would just like that clarity and be able to be included in this process somehow so that we know that we're working together as a collaborative. Thank you very much. And again, if there's some CDD officials right behind you, if you could talk to them whether you okay. Vanessa Rodriguez. Well, first and foremost, Vanessa Rodriguez, Los Angeles Chamber of Commerce, and thank you for such a great um, committee meeting. It seems like everyone was here that needed to be, so thank you for that. And on behalf of the Chamber, we are in strong support of Laura Chick's um, report as well as the three motions before you today. It was actually taken for a vote um, at last month's full board of directors meeting where it won unanimous support. So we're very much in support of the aforementioned. And as you all know, in the private sector, a clear chain of command um, accountability and measurable performance are absolutely essential in managing a successful enterprise. And as each of the three of you mentioned earlier, the same is true of government. Immediately shifting the city's anti-gang programs into the mayor's office is a smart way to increase effectiveness in the near term. This will allow the city council, city departments, and the mayor to focus on developing a long-term, all-inclusive strategy for the city of Los Angeles. There is no reason why the nation's epicenter of gang violence should not also become the ground zero for a comprehensive solution. The Chamber will continue to advocate for the improved effectiveness of city efforts and stay committed to our own youth programs, including Higher LA, LA Youth at Work, Grand Hog Job Shadow Day, and a number of others. Thank you. Thank you very much. Erin Green. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. My name is Aaron Green. I'm the Legislative Affairs Manager with the Valley Industry and Commerce Association. Um, I want to thank you for holding this hearing, and I'm going to be brief. As we've heard, our current programs to combat our gangs in Los Angeles just aren't working. And on the 14th of March at the Ad Hoc Committee on Gangs, we heard Chief Bill Bratton say that the time for study is over. So what we need to do now is we need to take action. And gang activity across the city is increasing, and the San Fernando Valley has not been immune to this. Um, I'm not here to denigrate the current anti-gang programs, and I think that many of them are well-intentioned. But um, what they're not getting the chance to do is be involved in big picture action. And there is not a centralized program, as has been discussed. Um, we, there is no oversight to evaluate the effectiveness of these programs. We know that some are working, but we don't know whether all of them are working or to what extent they are working. And there is no single body, no single office, no single person, as we've heard, that can be held accountable for the progress of these programs. Um, the proposed program outlined by Controller Chick, what it will do is it will centralize accountability for more than 12 anti-gang programs. It allows for, like I said, big picture, big actions to take place within this city. And you know, when gang violence is reduced in the city of Los Angeles, what that means is it will create a better business community. When there are gangs in the community, there is no incentive for business owners to reinvest in their businesses. But when the gangs are not present, that means that business owners have the opportunity to reinvest, Therefore, there will be more business and we'll have more jobs. So, Vika, 
definitely and strongly encourages you to support this effort, and I thank you very much for your time. Thank you. Arnold Sachs. Good afternoon, Arnold Sachs. Um, as I mentioned before in, in the city council chambers, the 15 city the, uh, council members, you have probably 300 years of experience in government running the city of LA. And so you should have a pretty good idea what programs are working on. I'm for the consolidation. I'm looking for more consolidation. That's one of the reasons I, I actually came here. What you're going to do with this program is it's going to happen. But I, I'm like, are there other areas that can be consolidated? I'm looking at the housing departments, consolidating programs there, and and what steps would be taken, not necessarily put them under the mayor's um, control, but looking for consolidation for dup that, that um, reduces duplic duplication, a duplication. Um, uh, Councilman Weasel, you mentioned that putting all the departments might uh, putting all the, the, the money under the mayor's, the $19 million of putting all the um, agencies under the mayor's control would not necessarily be good because you'd have too much to look at, but spreading them out isn't working either. I mean, there's there's got to be a, a medium in it uh, that will be conducive to better programming and better um, uh, brain cramp um, direction and better control. Thank you for your time. Thank you. So on this item, we'll move it on to the next uh, committee. Okay. Or is it, where is that going? I, I uh, think what we were recommending is that we uh, adopt it and that we instruct the CLA and CAO to do the um, actual uh, review that's requested in the uh, motion. Do we have a list mm -hmm. of the organizations that receive funding from the city of Los Angeles? Well, I think the in the ad hoc committee, maybe CDD knows this better than I do, um, and through Connie Rice's uh, report, I think uh, that's where we get the $160 million figure from different departments that spend some money on anti-gang programs. But there were some questions raised as to some of the, whether some of those programs actually do anti-gang or do they just generally provide services for youth. Well, when I look uh, at Haven Hills, which is a very legitimate bad women's shelter, and I served on their board a number of years ago, when I'm looking at gang violence on the streets of Los Angeles, the shootings, the activities that take place, while there is a connection with those individuals committing those crimes with domestic violence, it falls in a different arena. And the question I have is when the dollars are dispersed to Haven Hills, they're always doing fundraisers to keep the programs alive and going, this residential facility, et cetera. How much is going there versus how much is going to those programs that are dealing with the gangbangers who are terrorizing communities. That's what I'm looking for when it comes to mm -hmm. the distribution of the dollars. Because Haven Hills is a nonprofit. They're not fully subsidized by the city, but I'm sure there's many programs that are fully subsidized by the city uh, when it comes to gang intervention, gang activities, and anti-gang activities. And to see which ones they are, where, where we're spending our money, because domestic violence clearly needs funding. The DART program needs funding. Uh, that's a different, to me, a different arena than the hardcore gang programs where they're dealing with the thugs on the street, carrying guns mm -hmm. and shooting people. So do we have a breakdown of that? How much is spent on what organizations? Because a, a woman who's a victim of domestic violence is not on the street terrorizing the community, shooting people. She's a victim versus the gang member is on the streets terrorizing the women and terrorizing the community. So you got the perpetrator and you got the victim. Uh, how does that all blend in with the distribution of the organizations that you have? Uh, okay. <laughs> that, that's a really big question. I have here, and we can uh, leave it with the committee, a breakdown of the programs included in the $19 million as it relates to the 0809 
uh, uh, fiscal you know, program year that began on April 1st. And CDBG money. It, Karen, could you just identify who you are? Yeah, I'm sorry. sorry. Everybody knows. <laughs> yes. Sharon Morris, Assistant General Manager of CDD. And we'll, we, can, we can leave this information with you. It doesn't cover all of our programs. It's only the ones that in the categories affected by the, the uh, re, uh, proposed reallocation of funding. Would Haven Hills be there? Haven Hills is in here, and I believe that I, I just saw it, it, it's around $70,000. So there's a small amount of money. There really is no agency that we fully fund. What about Catholic Charities? Because I remember a few years back, uh, the Archbishop or the Cardinal yeah, that's in there. was talking about uh, funding some of their programs, and I I thought they were funded almost 100 percent. No. We have a couple of contracts with Catholic Charities under our Neighborhood Action Program, the, the NAPS. They've got, um, we've got one for classroom earning, learning activities for uh, children three to five years of age, and that's 75500 See, I would look at children three to five. That's really pre-gang mentality. Sure. Three and five year olds aren't involved in gangs yet. I mean, they got to be a little older than five. Sure. So when I look at distribution of dollars, I would say that needs to come out of another fund because well, the, you're getting gangbangers at three to five. The, the, the tricky thing is with, the, with these funds, they are not all anti gang programs. Some of them have a component where they may be touching families that are involved in the gang life or their kids are uh, affiliated or could become affiliated but they are not treated as gang members in our youth development and family development programs they're treated as members of the community in need of services yeah i'd look at children youth and the families to fund something like that that's what i think children youth and the families would be good for at that age three to five years old Children, youth, and the families. Well, we're, we're looking at, at, well, you know, they don't really operate those types of programs in children, youth, and families. The, the funding for our NAP programs is, comes from the Community Services Block Grant. That's anti-poverty money. So the goal of a program like this is to allow uh, working poor families to go to work. The, they're in need of child care. We subsidize a lot of after, before and after school care and child care so that families can get free and low cost child care and they're able to, to go to work to get training so that they can take care of their families. This is not specifically, nor is domestic violence specifically an anti-gang program, but that does not mean they don't touch those families. Uh, you know, the gentleman gave you a really good example of how you have that dovetail between domestic violence and anti-gang. Frequently what we see as well is when there's violence in the home, it pushes the child on the street and they become more vulnerable to, to joining gangs or getting jumped into gangs. So for each of these programs, there is a role for a family living in poverty. There's a role for keeping children off the streets. But then that does not mean that they are defined as an anti-gang program. So, so how much money do we have going into hardcore gang members who are terrorizing the communities okay that would really be our bridges to program and that program is for 3.7 million dollars so 3.7 million out of 19 million well that's not in here no the, that's not in there no no we, no we've and in our ad hoc committee on gangs we've come up with a number of 82 million dollars for targeted anti-gang programs 82 uh, million yes but some there was also some asterisk saying that the majority of that is for suppression efforts not necessarily for uh prevention and intervention right the bridges to intervention program is the really the only program of its type in the in the city and that's uh, that uh, Mr. Gannon was talking about, the intervention workers that he works with on the street. That's the program that funds them. Because I know in my district, the southwest San Fernando Valley, we have some gangs that are under the injunction by the city attorney uh, to keep them on their toes. But we'll have a shooting, and then we have the retaliation, and then we have the retaliation, and it seems that the chain continues. And I'm looking at that program that would deal with that, that would be there in the community once the first shooting goes down, before you have the first retaliation. 
right. and then it's just the subsequent. That Those are the kind of programs that I look at to really make some major impact, whether we give them a job or do something, Yes. to, to get them on the straight and narrow. But it seems to me that there's a lot of money going into programs that are on the fringe versus right in the center. And it's difficult dealing with those center groups that are under the injunction. There's no question about it. And working in my role as a police officer twice a month and arresting people on felony warrants with the tattoos all over their body, the, the, the different gangs that are notorious for terrorizing, those are the programs that I look at to really work with the police department to have major intervention uh, and, and to bring them around. But they're difficult. It's expensive, I'm sure. Mm -hmm. But to make that connection with those hardcore gang, violent, they don't care. Right. That, that's, that, I think, is the key. That's the officer in Glendale who was shot at. His bulletproof vest saved him. Uh, he killed the gang member who killed his friend just days or an hour before. I mean, that's the kind of person that's really causing havoc in the community. What type of money do we have going into that? That is really the ground, you know, bottom zero. Right, and, and and truly, that is the three point seven million dollars for the Bridges Two program. Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much. Thank you for helping us with that. So, on this item, what's the disposition? We will. Can we send it off? Can, can we? Uh, this is one committee that we're hearing. It. It's scheduled to go to other committees, uh, but the request by the motion, the uh, the maker of the motion, was to begin the implementation. So, is that? So okay. at this point, the um, the the uh, audits committee can approve the uh, recommendations with uh, which instruct a report back, and the uh, de various departments uh, can start their uh, written reports and submit it. And uh, then, uh, depending on the recommendations or the contents of that report, uh, that then it will be heard in uh, this committee. So. Uh, and then go to subsequent and committees. Okay. Yeah, exactly, depending on whatever the recommendations are in those various department reports. Okay. But if you don't uh, approve it, then there's no uh, formal instruction for the departments to do anything. Okay. Okay. Well, uh, move I'll move, move that item. Okay. Thank you. Next, uh, next item. Next is item number two, and that is motion Gruel Han Zion Weiss relative to developing comprehensive performance measures and evaluation process for all anti gang and youth development programs funded by the city. We talked earlier and we touched upon it. I think if we go to a public comment at this point and then come back. Uh, we had an, three people here who signed up for the three items, so I'll call those people again. Um, ben Shermer, do you wish to speak on this item again? No. Sarah Bending, no. Vanessa Rodriguez, do you wish to speak on this? No. So neither for number three either. It was just to speak on all three items collectively. I think, Mr. Um, sorry, your name again, sorry. Ben he, He's, I think we, the 19 million, there's different lists that Sharon, I think you have, and what Laura Chick attached to her document. Um, and so I don't know if you've seen Laura Chick's document. I got it just before we came Okay, in. so uh, maybe we'll make sure that we get a, all of us, inc including you, um, get a what is the $19 million so people have an understanding and sometimes what it's not so they'll feel more comfortable on that. <laughs> 19 out of 82. Yeah. Sorry, excuse me for that. Want to make a motion? Item number two. Make a motion. Well, my, Anna, this is the, looking at direction. Again, I think that uh, the motions that Mr. Cardenas introduced on Friday, some, um, and as Ms. Chick mentioned, are, are not in, in conflict with what I had put forward. And so maybe in this one, we can adopt it um, and have it go forward to the, the, the gangs committee uh, relative to what they're doing and see that there's some coordination on that. I think gangs has a meeting tomorrow, but um, my interest in moving these motions was to, to jumpstart and make sure that we were moving forward. And so I think that a couple of the motions he's introduced uh, will be in concert with that. So if we adopted those, we could move those forward um, to uh, direct to go to the gangs committee and be developed in concert with Mr. Cardenas's motions. And what we're calling for is performance measures and evaluation process, Correct. which is most appropriate. Yeah. Okay, thank you. 
unanimous. So approved. Approved. And uh, next item is item number three, and that's motion Grill Han Zion Weiss relative to establishing a process to reprocure all youth and family services contracts within six months of creating the consolidated anti gang unit and establishing evaluation criteria. I think it would be the same action, which is approving that and then moving that one forward to the gang committee. Okay. We'll do that. Approved. So moved. Okay. Approved. And anything else? That's it. Any other, anybody else have a public comment? No? Thank you very much. This meeting is adjourned. Thanks, Jose. Thank you. Hope you get to sleep again tonight.